Babesiosis is a tick-borne illness uh, that uh, is caused by an uh, intraerythrocytic parasite, a parasite that gets into red blood cells. And it is, it is tick-borne, it's, it's transmitted by the same tick that transmits Lyme disease. And um, the organism actually lives within mice and is transmitted from mouse to mouse through ticks. And these ticks take a blood meal and when they do, they pick up the organism. And then uh, they go through a, a series of molts and uh, there, there's three life stages. And one of these stages uh, is primarily responsible for transmission of babesiosis to, to humans. Uh, the, um, the disease is, um, uh, varies in terms of its severity from mild, asymptomatic, even asymptomatic uh, infection in about a quarter of adults and half of children to uh, a very severe, in fact, fatal disease. Um, there are certain groups of people that are at increased risk of severe disease, and that would be people who are over the age of 50 or under the age of three months, uh, people who have cancer, who ha lack a spleen, who have HIV infection, or people on immunosuppressive drugs, as well as children with sickle cell disease and thalassemia. Um, so it can be really quite uh, severe, um, but um, most people will have a mild to moderate illness that's self-limited. The number of cases reported at this time is probably grossly underestimated, but it's about 1,000 cases a year. That compares to about 20,000 to 30,000 cases of Lyme disease. However, we know that babesiosis is much harder to diagnose, people are less familiar with it, and probably that disparity between the number of cases of Lyme disease and babesiosis is much more narrow than, uh, than the 20 or 30 to 1 ratio I just described. And in fact, we've done research on Block Island uh, to, and in southeastern Connecticut showing that, uh, indicating that in areas where the two diseases occur, the incidence of babesiosis is much closer to that of Lyme disease than, than is generally realized. The frequency of Lyme disease is greater than that of babesiosis because Lyme disease is found in, uh, has a greater geographic spread. Um, uh, there are areas where Lyme disease exists, babesiosis doesn't, but there are no areas that I'm aware of where babesiosis exists and Lyme doesn't. Lyme disease does not. Um, also, even in areas where both are present and we've done careful epidemiologic studies, even then the incidence of Lyme disease is a little bit greater than that of babesiosis. So, so Lyme disease is more frequent. Yeah. Babesiosis um, has the potential to be, uh, as I say, very severe and sometimes fatal. And in certain groups, such as the immunocompromised patients we talked about, the, uh, d the fatality rate can be anywhere from 10 to, to 30 percent, 10 to 28 percent. Um, another difference is that, uh, where, uh, that, that is that babesiosis can be transmitted through the blood supply, uh, whereas Lyme, there's no evidence that that occurs with Lyme disease. And, the, and in fact, Babesia microti, which is the type of Babesia we see in the Northeast and the Northern Midwest, is the most common uh, pathogen transmitted through the blood supply in the United States. And so that's, a, that's certainly a concern. And um, it's, um, it's, a, it's a situation where the, the blood supply currently is safe. I mean, it's, it's, not a, it's a rare event that someone would get babesiosis through blood. On the other hand, uh, it's increasing in its frequency. We, we know that, that that's the case. It, it is the most frequently transmitted pathogen in the United States through the blood supply. And then the third problem is that those people who get babesiosis, who, who um, experience babesiosis through blood transfusion, generally have more severe disease than, than someone who gets it through tick transmission. And in fact, the mortality rate has been shown to be so, between 10 and 28 uh, percent in people who are transfused or who get babesiosis through transfusion. Block Island is ideal because, the, uh, because there's a high incidence of both babesiosis and Lyme disease on Block Island. So it's very useful to, to study, uh, uh, certainly useful to study babesiosis, but also uh, Lyme disease and, the, and in fact the two can be uh, transmitted simultaneously. So we can study co-infection uh, on Block Island. So that's, that's certainly, so, so the fact that there's a lot of disease there is, is, is helpful in our, in our studies. Um, also the island is, um, is separated obviously from the mainland. You have a, uh, a population that 
uh, generally goes to a single, the single medical center on the island for their care and we collaborate with the physicians on the, and the nurses on the island uh, at the medical center and so that's very helpful. So it, it's very useful from, a, from both a, a clinical and epidemiologic uh, standpoint uh, to study, to study this, this disease on Block Island. We did epidemiologic studies to try to characterize how, how frequent the disease was. And I, I had mentioned earlier that we found that, uh, that Babesiosis is quite common on Block Island. And in fact, uh, is about three quarters as much uh, uh, in terms of frequency as Lyme disease. So uh, that was, I think that was just an important finding. Um, we've also found that uh, we, we've characterized disease, the disease, the clinical presentation of disease, and especially in regard to co-infection. And um, uh, we were able to publish the first report, really, uh, uh, f first report of any series uh, of, uh, of co-infection with babesiosis and Lyme disease. Um, the other thing, we've also carried out um, uh, b both diagnostic uh, studies uh, as well as treatment studies on Block Island, uh, and uh, we've we were able to. Sh uh, we are able to uh, look at the, the uh, com a drug combination that's currently being used uh, uh, for the treatment of babesiosis. So we've been able, to, um, been able to do a lot of work on Block Island. It's been very productive. We're looking at um, the, um, the, the, the factors in the environment, factors, ecological factors, uh, as well as human factors that uh, human behavior that leads to uh, an increased risk uh, for babesiosis. Uh, I'm working with Dr. Derlin Fish and Maria, uh, Dr. Maria Dukwasser uh, and uh, Dr. Sahar Usmani Brown on, on these problems and uh, along with the people on Block Island. So we're, we're looking at, at, at that aspect and, and I think that's going to be uh, very important. Uh, we're also looking at uh, developing new diagnostic tools, uh, we're looking at uh, uh, development of, of biomarkers, um, uh, that is certain proteins that uh, are made in response to the Babesia organism that will help us uh, develop diagnostic tests. We're also looking at, um, uh, uh, looking at the uh, causes for it, the increased uh, severity of disease in older people and people over the age of 50. Um, uh, we're investigating that, uh, that uh, problem. We're also interested in looking at the genetic aspects of the disease. Uh, the, uh, uh, looking at, at different substrains of Babesia that may be, uh, some substrains uh, may be more pathogenic than others. So we're looking to, uh, to investigate, we're looking a, a, along the lines of uh, genetic, um, the genetic makeup of, of the organism and, uh, and, its, and its variety. Uh, it's likely that over time, uh, it, the Babesiosis uh, does not spread as rapidly as Lyme disease, but it seems to be catching up in terms of its, uh, its spread. And so I think over time, uh, most of the areas where Lyme disease exists will be seeing Babesiosis uh, as well.